Hi, welcome back. This video is all about creating tubular structures in Blender. I've recently released a couple of assets based on procedural tubes made using geometry nodes. This is because there are quite a lot of instances when you need to draw something that is either a cylinder, a hollow tube, or some combination of both. Blood vessels are a good example, but there are many other examples, including optical fibers, chemical reactors, even nanowires, nanofibers, and so on. A common theme with all of these illustrations is that you often want to show some kind of internal structure by peeling back layers, creating cutaways, or a combination of these two. Of course, geometry nodes are not a must. You could use ordinary mesh modeling, or maybe use Boolean modifiers for the cutaway effects, but this can limit the ability to edit later. Also, Booleans can easily get computationally quite heavy, especially when trimming complex geometries and slow Blender down. In this video, we'll go over how to 1. Create cylindrical structures in geometry nodes using curves, and 2. How to use the trim curve node to create cutaways. To illustrate these points, I'm going to recreate this schematic of a hybrid nanofiber yarn with an outer layer of sputter-coated ITO particles. Uh, this is taken from this publication in Advanced Materials from 2022. So first, let's create the core yarn. So here I have a basic Blender file open uh, with just an HDRI, a plane and an aerial light. I'm going to go ahead and open the Geometry Nodes Editor on the left so that we can work. And so the first thing we're going to need to do is add a Bezier curve. So press Shift A, go to Curve and add a Bezier. Let's go ahead and name that something useful. In this case, let's call it a nanofiber yarn, like so. And to do all the geometry node stuff, let's go ahead and add a new node tree and also call this nanofiber yarn. So the first order of business to create the solid core, let's go ahead and add a curve to mesh node. And in the profile curve socket, add a curve circle. Drop the radius down to something smaller, like 0.1. I'm just going to move the plane down a bit. And to solidify this tube, all you need to do is add a fill caps or select the fill caps option. And there you have yourself a solid cylinder. And given that it's all procedural, again, you just need to play with the Bezier curve uh, to create different shapes of fiber. Let's add a set material node to choose a material for this core, come over to the material properties tab, create a new material, and let's call this core. I'll give it a slightly blue material just to make it not white, and let's select core in the set material mode. And so there we have our core. Now to create the outer layer of ITO, Press Ctrl Shift D to duplicate with the connections, and let's create a new branch of nodes. So this lower one, I'm going to group together into a into a frame by selecting them. Press Ctrl J to add a frame, and let's name this the core. So for the outer layer of ITO, I want to do something a little bit extra. From the mesh output of the curve to mesh, look for an extrude mesh node. Let's have a look at what we're doing. Let's connect the output of that to the group output, uh, and things are looking a little bit wild. Uh, two things we want to do here. The first is we select individual. Uh, this makes it so that the extrusion happens uh, continuously with all the faces connected. Let's also untick fill caps so that we don't have the funky things happening at the end. Finally, let's bring down the offset value to something smaller, like 0.05. And so now we have ourselves a solid hollow cylinder. What we're going to do is we're going to use this hollow cylinder to spawn a bunch of particles to wrap around the core. Go ahead and add a distribute points on faces node. And an instance on points node into the instance socket. Let's add a points node. 
And again, let's bring down the radius, something at 0 0.03. And so now if I add a join geometry node and join these points with the core, you'll see that we're starting to add points all the way around the outside. First thing, let's crank up the density of the distributed points node. I'm going to set something like 1000 or maybe even higher. Let's go to 2000. And that allows you to create a solid layer of particles which is currently quite difficult to see because it has just the same material as the background. So let's add a set material node after the instance of points. Again, in the materials tab, let's add now a new material, ITO. And just like in the original figure, let's give it a dark reflective material. Let's bring down the roughness to 0.2. Back in geometry nodes. Let's select the ITO material, and there we have the ITO coating. This is looking good. So now, essentially, what we have is a layer of ITO particles, the thickness of which we can control by changing the amount of extrude mesh. We can also make the particles smaller or larger just by controlling the radius of the points. And if you've happened to find gaps in between, all you need to do is up the density of the distribute points and faces. Just quickly join together in a frame, call the ITO layer. With the upper branch, we've basically taken that Bezier curve, but instead of making a solid cylinder, we've created a hollow cylinder. And then we've used the faces of that hollow cylinder to instance a bunch of points to create our ITO particles. So if I just have a look at the upper layer on its own, you see that all it is is just a hollow cylinder of particles. Now in the original figure, you'll find that the ITO layer is peeled back just a bit to be able to see the core a bit more easily. And this is where the trim curve node comes in very handy. Let's go ahead and add a trim curve node to the upper branch before the curve to mesh. So what this will do is allow us to trim the Bezier curve only to the layer that's creating the ITO particles to make it shorter or longer. So to be able to peel it back, go ahead and change the start value or the end value. And now this allows you to have control how much of the ITO coating covers the core quite easily. Let's say, for example, we want to go a step further and we want to also cut open along the circumference of this ITO layer. Let's duplicate the trim curve node and now drop it in between the curve circle and the curve to mesh node. So we're going to actually trim the curved circle that we are using to solidify the ITO layer into a hollow cylinder. So again, if I play with the start and end values, I can use that to create a partial coating of ITO. We're talking at the start, we can have full coverage and also to peel it back like this to show the core inside. So already with these two trim curve nodes, we can do quite a lot of interesting cutaways and in internal structure illustrations for things like composite structures, composite fibers, and so on. One final step we can do is we can combine these two controls of length and radial control of how the trimming works. So for example, maybe I want only one section of this length of nanofiber to have this cutaway happening, and the rest is just solid coating of ITO. So to do that, Go ahead and select all of the nodes in the ITO layer. Control Shift D to duplicate everything with the node still connected. Now let's also connect the output of that into the joint geometry. Next, you want to add a value node, and this is going to drive where the, the different trim behavior happens. I just set this to something like 0.5. Now you want to take this value and input it into the end value of the trim, trim curve for one of the layers and also the start of the other trim curve for the second layer. Make sure to set the start value to zero for the first one and the end value to one on the second. Let's say that the top layer is the section of ITO where we do not have this radial slicing. I'm going to get rid of the trim curve node between the curve circle and the curve to mesh. And so now you can see what's happening. Halfway along the Bezier curve, we get the full coating of ITO, which is created by this top layer. 
So I'll go ahead and rename this top set of nodes as the ITO, say full layer. And then the second half of the Bezier curve, we have the ITO layer sliced open. So maybe I can rename the second group as ITO sliced layer. And so now with this setup, we can control how much of this um, ITO layer is sliced and where it slices based on this value node that we just added. So if I increase the value within reason to less than uh, less than one, so if we set it to 0 0.8, for example, uh, 0.8 or 80% of the curve has full coverage of the ITO layer and 20% is sliced open. And again, using the trim curves that we added before, we can control how that trim section looks like so, and we have full procedural control over how this looks. Side note, obviously this approach works if you're illustrating a structure where the outer layer is just a regular solid layer rather than a layer of particles. All you'd have to do is just not have the distribute points on faces and instance on points. So if I mute the instance on points and distribute points nodes, you'll see that you get a solid layer. You might find, for example, that you have a funky interface where you have joining of the two sections with different slicing operations. The way that you can get around that is you can add a merge by distance node. So what I would suggest is have a join geometry node just for the outer layers and join them first. After the join geometry, go ahead and add a merge by distance node and plug that in. So what you're doing is you're merging the full layer and the slice layer together before joining it with the core. The default value of distance of 0.001 is usually enough then to get rid of the discontinuity that you see at the interface. So now you have a smooth connection between the sliced and not sliced section of the layer. And that's basically it for how you can create some schematics of tubular structures, nanowires and so forth using procedural methods in geometry nodes. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful, please leave a like and a comment, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.